So in previous videos, we've learned about glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And we've learned that these two metabolic pathways are collectively referred to as central metabolism. And we've also learned that we can take this particular intermediate of glycolysis to enter the pentose phosphate pathway to essentially form this ribose 5-phosphate. And we've learned this ribose 5-phosphate is really important because this ribose 5-phosphate can be used to biosynthesize all of our nucleotides. To This ribose 5-phosphate can be used to biosynthesize all of our RNA and DNA nucleotides. So how do we take this ribose 5-phosphate to biosynthesize these nucleotides? Well, the first step is we take this ribose 5-phosphate and we react it with ATP, where essentially this ATP throws on two phosphate groups to form this PRPP, which stands for phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. But the point is we take this ribose 5-phosphate to form this PRPP. Now, once we form this PRPP, it has two choices it can make. It can either be used to form IMP, which can be used to biosynthesize all of our purine nucleotides, or it can be used to biosynthesize this orodidine 5 mono, monophosphate, which can be used to biosynthesize all of our puridine nucleotides. So how exactly does this work? Well, let's, so let's say we want to take this PRPP to biosynthesize these purines. Well, again, the first step is we form this IMP, which is now committed to being converted into to one of these purines. However, once we form this IMP, now can be used to biosynthesize all of our purines. And in fact, this is actually quite a complex pathway. And in reality, we can also take this IMP to form other intermediates, which can be used to form this, these, these DNA nucleotides. But the point is, we take this PRPP, convert it into this IMP, which can now be used to biosynthesize all of our purine nucleotides. However, in other scenarios, we may want to take this PRPP to biosynthesize these pyrimidine nucleotides. So how do we biosynthesize the pyrimidine nucleotides? Well, again, the first step is to form this intermediate. Now, once we form this intermediate, now we're committed to biosynthesize the pyrimidines. So for example, we can take this particular intermediate, do some modifications, and now we have our T nucleotide. However, we can also take this, this intermediate to do some other modifications to enter a separate pathway to form this U nucleotide, this UTP. And once we form this UTP, we can do other modifications to form this CTP, this C nucleotide, which can then go through modifications to form this DCTP, this deoxy C nucleotide. However, the point is, is we can take this PRPP, which came from this intermediate of central metabolism. So we take this particular intermediate of central metabolism to form this PRPP, which can be used to biosynthesize all of our relevant nucleotides. And all of these intermediates are all of the important nucleotides. For example, we see these are all the DNA nucleotides. Here we have our G nu DNA nucleotide, our A DNA nucleotide, and our T and C DNA nucleotides. So these are all the deoxyribonucleotides, the four, the four base pairs to create DNA. And also with these intermediates, we have all of the RNA nucleotides. We have our G, A, U, and C. So we can see through, through these pathways, we, we can form all of the relevant nucleotides we need for DNA and RNA. However, how do we degrade these nucleotides? Because we know with all products in the in in the cell we biosynthesize products and then we degrade those products there's turnover like for example with proteins we biosynthesize proteins and then we degrade proteins it's the same idea we have turnover we biosynthesize these nucleotides and then we degrade these nucleotides so how do we degrade these nucleotides well for the purines there are, the way we buy, we degrade all these purines are relatively similar so i'm just going to focus on atp to use as an example this this a nucleotide so again, the first step is we, we essentially, we hydrolyze this bond. So again, in reality, it's a little more complex, but the point is we do some quick modifications where the point is, is we hydrolyze this bond and now we have this purine nitrogenous base waste product. So again, we, we hydrolyze this bond. Now we have this purine nitrogenous waste waste product, this base, which is a waste product. Now we can do some quick modifications to eventually form this uric acid, which is, is again a waste product, which can be excreted in our urine. This uric acid can be filtered out in our glomeruli and excreted in our urine. So again, that's how we, that, so, and then again, 
different organisms are a little different and some organisms do some more modifications to this uric acid. But the point is, this is a waste product and now we can excrete it out in our urine. So that's the way we degrade the, these purines. And again, it's a little more complex. For example, these deoxy, the, these DNA nucleotides, first we have to convert them into the respective RNA nucleotides. However, once we form this RNA nucleotides, it's that same basic idea. We hydrolyze these bonds, creating these nitrogenous waste products, which can then do some modifications to form uric acid, which is excreted out in the urine. So again, that's how we degrade these purines. It's, a, it's the same idea. However, how do we degrade these pyrimidines? Well, it's a little more complex. For example, how do we degrade this UTP? Well, again, it's a similar idea. We do some modifications. And, and again, to simplify things, the point is, is we hydrolyze this bond and now we create this nitrogenous waste product, this pyrimidine nitrogenous waste product. And again, this is a waste product we want to excrete out of the body. So how do we do that? Well, we take this pyrimidine nitrogenous waste product and we do some quick chemical modifications, eventually forming these waste products. Because again, this pyrimidine nitrogenous based waste product is made out of these items. So, so we have to degrade this guy and these are the waste products. So we know ammonia is a waste product. So we have to, we have to process it into urea, which can then be excreted out through, our, through our, it can be filtered out in our glomeruli and excreted out in our urine. We know carbon dioxide, we simply breathe out when we exhale. So, so carbon dioxide is, is excreted out of our body through, through our lungs. And then we know this beta alanine is also a waste product, which can also be excreted out in our urine. However, this beta alanine has some high energy electrons. So this beta alanine, can be used as a source of energy. So we can process this beta alanine into acetyl-CoA, which we know is a source of energy. This acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle and be used to create ATP. But the point is when we, this UTP, sometimes we want to degrade it. So the way we would degrade it is we do some modifications. We break this bond, releasing this pyrimidine nitrogenous waste product, which we degrade into these waste products, which can mostly be excreted out in the urine. However, how do we degrade some of these other pyrimidines? Well, with CTP, the way we degrade the CTP is we first convert it into UTP. Now, once we convert it into UTP, it can simply enter this, pro this, this degradation waste pathway. And again, the same thing with this DCTP. Again, if we want to waste this deoxy CTP, again, we first convert it into the ribose form, then we convert the CTP into UTP, which can then enter this, this degradation pathway. However, what about this T, this T pyrimidine? Well, again, it's a similar idea. I'm, I'm simplifying things, but the point is, is we do some modifications where we break this bond, releasing this pyrimidine nitrogenous base, which we know is a waste product. So again, we can degrade this guy through, we do through some chemical modifications, eventually forming these waste products, which again, we know this gets converted into urea, which can get excreted out through our, through our kidneys, carbon dioxide, we simply breathe out. And this is also another waste product that's formed, which can also essentially be excreted out in our urine, but this all, this intermediate also has some high energy electrons, which can be used as a source of energy. So we can take this intermediate, do some chemical modifications to form this succinyl CoA, which again, we know can enter the Krebs cycle and be used to create ATP. But the point is, there's a lot of neat nucleotide metabolism that essentially stems from this central metabolism. We can essentially stemming from the central metabolism, we can use these intermediates to biosynthesize all of the relevant nucleotides. So below, in, in a link below, I have a video that goes into more detail on this purine metabolism. Because in reality, it's actually a little more complex. I skipped some steps. So, so if you're more interested in this purine metabolism, I have a link of that video below. And if you're more interested in this pyrimidine metabolism, the, the biosynthesis and the degradation processes, I have a link of that video below.